In this video, we're learning about the water cycle, so we'll cover what the water cycle is and the forces that drive these global movements of water. Let's start with what the water cycle is and cover how water cycles between the land, oceans, and atmosphere. To begin our explanation, we need to grab some land and water. Now, because it's a cycle, we can start our explanation anywhere. So let's say that our first step is that energy from the sun comes down and causes some of the water to evaporate. So this could be water from lakes, oceans, rivers, but also water on land. For example, water in puddles or water in the soil. And don't forget that there will also be evaporation of water from the leaves of plants, which we call transpiration. So now we've basically taken lots of liquid water from the Earth's surface and evaporated it into the water vapor in the air. As all this water vapor accumulates in the sky, it will start to condense into clouds, which can then be blown from one region to another. At some point, though, the water will fall back down to Earth as a liquid, in the form of rain. And the technical name for this process is precipitation. So now that the water has fallen back to Earth, it could seep into the soil, flow into rivers, or be taken up by plants. And then this whole cycle can repeat all over again. In colder conditions, though, water vapor in the atmosphere can also undergo crystallization, forming ice crystals that make up snow, sleet, or hail. This crystallization process is just another way that water changes form in the atmosphere before falling as precipitation. Finally, then, let's examine the forces that drive these global movements of water around our planet. The entire water cycle is powered by two main forces sunlight and gravity. Sunlight provides the energy needed for evaporation and transpiration, heating water at Earth's surface and turning it into water vapor, that then rises into the atmosphere. Without this solar energy, water would remain liquid, and the cycle couldn't continue. Gravity, on the other hand, is responsible for bringing water back down to Earth. It pulls precipitation downwards as rain, snow, or hail, and then continues to move water downhill across the land surface. This downhill flow creates streams and rivers that carry water from higher elevations back to the oceans, restarting the cycle all over again. These two forces work together continuously, creating the global movement of water that we see as weather patterns, ocean currents, and the constant cycling of water between different parts of our planet. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.